Hello heroes, welcome to another amazing episode of History of the Marvel Universe. This channel is brought to you in part by Patreon supporters. If you would like to help decide what topics get covered on the channel and get your name the special thanks at the end of each episode, you can sign up for as little as $1 per month over at patreon.com slash marymarvelite. The link is in the description below. You know, I first started this channel back in 2010 mostly to ramble about comic books online. I did sporadic uploads throughout 2011 and 2012, but pretty much petered out by the end of 2013. Out of those original videos, the ones which seemed to resonate with people were the videos in which I explained various aspects of the history of the Marvel Universe. Now, those older videos are unlisted, frankly because they don't exactly hold up, but in November of 2017, after experimenting with different types of content online, I decided to return to this channel, something I'd considered several times in the intervening years. Since Spider-Man Homecoming had released theatrically that same year, I decided to do a video spotlighting the earliest appearances of the Vulture, including the story that revealed his origins, and thus kicked off the current iteration of my History of the Marvel Universe series. Five years later, I'm working on the channel full-time and uploading weekly. So why am I talking about this here? Well, this video is not only the last one of the year, but also the 200th episode of History of the Marvel Universe, since I rebooted it with that Vulture episode in 2017. In the past five years, my style has evolved and improved, and so let's take another crack at that first topic. Not a great deal of the early life of Adrian Toomes has been documented. We know that he was born on Staten Island, was orphaned at a young age, and raised by his older brother Marcus. We also know that Marcus was paralyzed in a motorcycle accident when Adrian was a young man. Resenting being unable to move or take care of himself, Marcus asked his brother to kill him, but Adrian refused. Marcus insisted that human beings were all animals on the inside, and that in the wild a weak animal like himself would be killed and eaten, with anything remaining being left to the vultures. Now, it's actually not confirmed what happened to Marcus Toombs. In 2017's Spider-Man number 17, the crime boss Hammerhead commented that he needed to shake down the Vulture's brother for money, but given the circumstances it seems unlikely that this would be in reference to Marcus. Not only was Marcus paralyzed and suicidal the one time we saw him, but this scene would be set many decades later. By this point, Adrian was considerably elderly, and Marcus would be even older if he was even still alive. Of course, it's not confirmed if the brother in question is actually a blood relative of Adrian Toomes. It could even be that the Vulture Hammerhead referenced was one of the other men to use the name, which we'll talk about later in the video. Adrian also had a nephew named Malachi Toomes, but it's not confirmed if Malachi was Marcus's son. It does seem unlikely that Marcus would have had children after his accident, and so unless Malachi was conceived before then, it's entirely possible that the two had another unidentified brother. It should be noted that when Malachi was eventually killed, the Vulture exclaimed that he was his only living relative, but this has since been disproven. For example, as an adult, Adrian had a baby girl named Valeria Jessup with his lover Cheryl. During that time, Toombs was a wanted criminal, and so Cheryl took their daughter and left. Adrian also had an unidentified wife at one point, and the two had a son named Frankie, who eventually grew up and married a woman named Lenora. Frankie passed away a few years later, but not before he and Lenora had a child of their own, Tiana Toombs, Adrian's granddaughter. In addition, Toombs has also mentioned an unidentified grandson who suffered from leukemia. While this boy's father, presumably another of Adrian's sons, hasn't been seen, his mother was a waitress named Ramona. And according to the official handbook of the Marvel Universe, Toombs has another grandson, so despite once claiming to have no living relatives, he seems to have quite a few. But we're getting a little ahead of ourselves here, so let's get back to Adrian's story. 
As previously mentioned, at one point in his adulthood, Toombs became a career criminal. But he supposedly had an encounter with a legendary crime boss known as Tristram Silver, whose existence has been debated. After taking a beating from Silver's men, Toombs went straight and finished his engineering degree. He partnered with a business-savvy entrepreneur named Gregory Bestman and started a company called b and Electronics. Toombs soon demonstrated his own genius as the products he designed allowed the company to thrive and grow. With the money that was funneled back into his research, Toombs made his biggest breakthrough with an electromagnetic flying harness. Excited, he rushed into his partner's office to deliver the good news, but Bestman had stepped out. While there, Toombs discovered that Bestman had been vastly underreporting the company's profits and embezzling the majority of the money for himself. When Gregory returned, Toombs attacked in a rage, easily lifting him up. It seems that the electromagnetic harness had somehow energized his body, making him stronger than he had ever been. Shocked, Toombs dropped his former partner, who then told him to get out. Adrian Toombs soon found out that he had no legal recourse, since he'd already unknowingly signed papers that put the company completely in Bestman's control. While this wasn't present in the original story, one could also theorize that Adrian's criminal past might have prevented him from going after Bestman legally. In either case, he retired to an old firm on Staten Island and began plotting his revenge. Over the following months, he perfected his flying harness and tested his strength while wearing it. Taking the identity of the Vulture, he got to work ruining Bestman's business and stealing the money he believed was rightfully his. But this was only the start of his new criminal career, and soon he embarked on a crime spree across the city of New York. Since nobody was able to snap a decent picture of the Vulture in action, J. Jonah Jameson, the publisher of the Daily Bugle and Now magazine, put out a reward for his photograph. This caught the attention of high schooler Peter Parker, who was secretly the masked vigilante Spider-Man. As Spider-Man, Peter challenged the Vulture, and while he succeeded in getting the pictures, he was defeated in their first encounter. However, Peter was able to deduce the method by which his foe flew and developed an anti-magnetic inverter to counter it. This allowed Spider-Man to deactivate the Vulture's flying harness and leave him for the police, beginning the long enmity between them. This adventure also kicked off a long tradition of Peter Parker selling pictures of Spider-Man's exploits to J. Jonah Jameson. While serving his sentence in prison, Toombs was well behaved and was granted access to the machine shop. But this allowed him to scavenge enough parts to cobble together a makeshift version of his flying harness. While not powerful enough for combat, the Vulture was able to escape from prison. And soon he rebuilt his proper equipment, including countermeasures against Spider-Man's inverter. Again, the Vulture initially gained the upper hand, but was defeated by his masked opponent shortly thereafter. Toombs would subsequently escape from prison many more times and have many more encounters with Spider-Man. In one instance, he pre-programmed a set of wings to retrieve him from prison. In this instance, he tried to steal an atomic accelerator that the U.S. Army was transporting by train. He was ultimately forced to surrender the device, but managed to escape. He was then recruited by Dr. Octopus into the first incarnation of the Sinister Six. During this time, Adrian confided in Otto that what he really wanted was to pull off one big score and finally retire. The group of villains conspired to force Spider-Man into a series of one-on-one -on -one battles without time to recover. However, the Wall Crawler defeated them all individually, and the six were arrested. Toombs was subsequently released again thanks to a gangster named Nicholas Lewis, better known as the Crime Master. In exchange, Lewis tasked the Vulture with eliminating his rival, Wilson Fisk, the Kingpin. However, he was again interrupted by Spider-Man, whose taunting reminded Toombs of his younger, happier days. Ashamed and feeling like a failure, the Vulture voluntarily turned himself over to the police. Imprisoned again, his cellmate Blackie Drago hounded him for months about his wings. Drago eventually arranged for an accident to befall Toombs, suspecting the old man would confess on his deathbed. 
This plan seemingly worked as the Vulture told Blackie about an extra set of flying gear that he'd stashed just outside the prison. What Draco didn't realize was that confessing his plan to Tombs would cause the old man to be energized by rage, giving him the will to survive. Claiming the wings for himself, Blackie Drago added a helmet to the costume and dubbed himself the new Vulture. He battled Spider-Man and even briefly joined forces with Kraven the Hunter before being defeated. At the same time, Adrian Toomes faked his death by starting a fire and escaped. After Drago's defeat, Toomes retrieved him from prison by bringing him a spare set of wings. This was not so they could join forces, but rather Toomes wanted to prove himself superior and challenged his would-be successor. Despite his advanced age, Adrian's experience allowed him to emerge victorious and Blackie Drago swore off ever attempting to become the Vulture again. Toomes even defeated Spider-Man shortly after that, but was forced to flee before finishing him when the hero damaged his suit's power pack. Meanwhile, a professor at Empire State University, Dr. Clifton Shallot, was given one of the Vulture's flying harnesses by the police for study. He was also an expert in organic mutation, but when the college trustees cancelled his course, he performed an experiment to physically transform himself into a duplicate of Adrian Toomes, but with the wings becoming part of his body. Since the only person who knew about this was his lab assistant, Christine Morrow, Shallot decided to silence her. However, he mistakenly killed her roommate, Gloria Jenkins, who just so happened to look astonishingly similar. This murder was witnessed by Mary Jane Watson, who lived in the same building, leading to Spider-Man's involvement. Shallot was using a chemical antidote to change back to normal, but every time he transformed, he required a larger dose. This ultimately served as a clue for Spider-Man who deduced the new Vulture's identity and force-fed him the antidote, changing him back to Dr. Clifton Shallot and saving Christine Morrow. Although left unconscious, Shallot was arrested and imprisoned for Gloria Jenkins' murder. Meanwhile, the real Adrian Toomes was laying low, using a small repair shop on Manhattan's west side as a front while improving his technology. Months later, a mobster known only as Boss Morgan attempted to recruit Toomes into his organization. But in a blind rage, the Vulture attacked and humiliated the gangster, declaring that his only goal was to destroy Spider-Man. In response, Morgan hired the hitman, Burt Kenyon, to kill Spider-Man first and rob Toomes of his revenge. This resulted in a free-for-all between the three, which ended when Spider-Man tricked the Hitman into shooting the Vulture's power pack, disabling his foe, and ruining the Hitman's contract. Toomes crashed into a wooden structure, but was recovered by his nephew Malachi before the police arrived. Together, they plotted to take advantage of a power vacuum left behind by the then-recently-retired Wilson Fisk. The Toombs' efforts soon caught Spider-Man's attention, but the Vulture captured him and attempted a showy execution, both as a final revenge for his earlier defeats and as a way to demonstrate his power to the other gangs. Spider-Man, of course, escaped, and in the confusion, Malachi Toombs was shot and killed by another mobster, Black Alfred. In response, the Vulture nearly beat Alfred to death, but was stopped by Spider-Man. He ultimately defeated himself when he tried to escape, but in the delirium of his grief, crashed into a barrier and was badly injured. Despite his broken bones, he made a full recovery at Bellevue Hospital, and while there, he befriended a retired vaudeville performer named Nathan Lubensky. Inspired by Nathan's vigor and will to live, Adrian Toomes again built a makeshift flying machine to escape. He began another crime spree and operated out of the Restwell retirement home where nobody recognized him. Not even Nathan Lubensky, who hadn't learned that Toomes was the Vulture. But Lubensky was dating a woman named Mae Parker, who happened to be Spider-Man's aunt, and so Spidey inevitably found the Vulture. In the ensuing battle, Toomes tried to take a hostage, but in his haste, inadvertently grabbed Nathan. And so, coming to his senses, he pushed Lubensky away to cover his escape and flew off. 
He stayed under the radar for a time, living in a retirement community in the southwest, but upon learning that his former partner Gregory Bestman was back in business, he decided to return to New York. During a trade show in which Bestman was showing his new products, the Vulture attacked and abducted him, fighting off Spider-Man in the process. Toombs brought Bestman back to his Staten Island farm, but Spider-Man followed. The hero defeated the Vulture and saved Bestman, but not before recording their conversation, outlining everything Bestman had done to Toombs. Spider-Man turned that tape over to the authorities, and while they couldn't do anything about his past dealings with Toombs, the district attorney's office would be keeping a closer eye on Bestman's business practices going forward. Of course, as we've established, Adrian Toombs isn't the only person to make use of the flying technology that he developed. During one of his many trips to prison, the Vulture talked about the secrets of his technology with another inmate named Hancho, little realizing that he was smart enough to replicate it. After his eventual release, Hancho built flying suits for himself and three other criminals, Gripes, Pigeon, and Sugarface. The four of them became the Volturions and battled Spider-Man as he attempted to rid himself of the alien costume he acquired during the first Secret War. Annoyed and enraged, Toombs escaped from prison once again and attacked the Volturions, handily defeating them. The Vulture also briefly tangled with Daredevil during a scheme in which he was stealing from graves, and he was one of 99 villains recruited into Mephisto's Legion of the Accursed during the Second Secret War. After that, he traveled to Atlantic City where a deceased former colleague, Randall Reese, had lived. Using Reese's notes, he developed a plastic that could be manipulated with specific waves, which he used to make a set of rigged dice. He tried to sell these to a casino owner named Owen Brioski, seeking enough money for his retirement and eventual funeral arrangements, but was denied. The Vulture ransacked the casino and clashed with his rival Spider-Man, even gaining the upper hand. But he was driven off by the original Hobgoblin, who had allied himself with Brioski. You know, come to think of it, the Vulture's track record for almost defeating or even outright winning against Spider-Man is pretty good compared to most of his villains. Anyway, Toombs later tried to sell the rigged dice to Morris the Snake Diamond, a casino owner in Las Vegas, but was laughed out of the room for his asking price of $1 million. Naturally, casinos don't exactly need to rig the individual dice because the house always wins anyway. This didn't stop the Snake from sending his men to ransack the Vulture's motel room and stealing the journals containing the formula for his special plastic. In response, the Vulture downed an airplane that the Snake was traveling on, inadvertently destroying the journals. Upon learning of this mistake, Toombs intended on killing the Snake, but was stopped by Spider-Man. This time, the two fought each other to a stalemate, with Spider-Man knocking the Vulture out after being injected with a deadly chemical. He only survived thanks to an undercover operative from the Central Intelligence Division, Sarah Glenville, who arrested Toombs and forced him to give up the antidote. Toombs was imprisoned again, but during this time a cabal of influential villains engaged in a conspiracy known as the Axe of Vengeance, in which supervillains were contracted to attack heroes they had never encountered in an attempt to keep the heroes off balance. The Vulture was recruited into this conspiracy when another elderly genius, the Tinkerer, snuck a set of wings into his prison cell. Using these, Toombs escaped from federal prison despite attempts to stop him from mutant inmate Rusty Collins. However, upon meeting with the Tinkerer, the Vulture was annoyed to learn that the prime movers of the conspiracy expected him to face the novice hero Speedball. He instead sought to join forces with the explosive villain Nitro, but was thwarted by Rusty Collins and another mutant fugitive, Sally Blevins, aka Skids. After that, Toombs was hired by Wilson Fisk to assassinate another casino owner, Raymond Trask. This led to another confrontation with Spider-Man, during which the Vulture attempted to take a hostage by grabbing May Parker. Nathan Lubensky was with her at the time and saved her by leaping onto his former friend's back. However, when Toombs attempted to fly away with Lubensky holding on, Nathan suffered from heart failure and fell. Soon after that, Dr. Octopus reformed the Sinister Six, but Toombs and the others abandoned him when they learned that he'd deceived and manipulated them. 
They later intended on killing him in revenge, but Ak convinced them to join him in an attempt to steal weapons and technology from the terrorist group Hydra. Despite recruiting the giant alien monster Gog onto their side, this time the Sinister Six were defeated by the combined forces of Spider-Man, Ghost Rider, Deathlock, Solo, Nova, the Incredible Hulk, and the Fantastic Four. It wasn't long after that when Toomes learned that he was dying of cancer caused by the electromagnetic pack that powered his wings. Seeking to tie up loose ends before his death, he again abducted Gregory Bestman, bringing him back to his Staten Island farmhouse, but this time killing him in cold blood. He also confronted May Parker to apologize for Nathan Lubensky's death. Confessing that he didn't realize it was Nathan who grabbed him until he read about it in the newspapers after the fact. However, May had no intention on forgiving him and demanded that he leave. He made further attempts to speak with her, which of course resulted in another confrontation with his arch enemy. Flying up into the sky, Toombs overcharged his power pack, intending on killing both Spider-Man and himself. However, the masked hero successfully saved them both and turned the vulture over to the police. Later, May Parker visited him in jail and told him that while she wouldn't waste her life hating him, forgiveness was a matter between him and God. That story was printed in Spectacular Spider-Man number 186 to 188, and if you want to read a Vulture story for yourself, I highly recommend that one. Anyway, Adrian Toomes would not die in prison and soon made another daring escape. Desperate to restore his body, he stole an experimental device known as a Juvenator machine. Spider-Man attempted to intervene, but the Vulture used the machine on his enemy, stealing his youth. With his cancer healed by the process, Toomes crafted a new costume, properly shielding himself against the negative effects of his power pack to prevent his previous mistakes. And while he remained healthy, the other effects of the Juvenator proved to be temporary and he soon reverted to his original age. However, he found a more permanent solution when he absorbed the artificial life force from a robotic duplicate of Peter Parker's mother. There's a bit of a long story behind that, but the short version is that the chameleon created simulacra of Peter Parker's parents as part of a revenge plot set in motion by Harry Osborn, the second Green Goblin. In his youthful new form, the Vulture teamed up with another avian-themed villain, the Owl, with the goal of killing their enemies with an experimental virus. While Spider-Man was indeed infected, the Owl abandoned the tombs and Spidey was later cured by Dr. Octopus. Soon after, Doc Ock was murdered by a rogue clone of Spider-Man named Kane, prompting the Vulture to join forces with other former members of the Sinister Six. First, as part of a scheme to steal files and equipment from their deceased former comrade, and later in an attempt to kill Kane before he could target any more of them. Of course, both of these plots were foiled by Spider-Man. The Vulture also took the name Holden Tooks and attempted to take further revenge on Gregory Bestman by usurping control of his company from his son, John Bestman. However, this scheme was uncovered by Vigilantes, the Prowler and the Night Creeper, and the Vulture was ousted from Bestman Electronics. Eventually, his renewed youth began to wear off once again, and he affixed the Juvenator machine to his gauntlets so he could steal life energy from people. While he succeeded in collecting enough to sustain himself for some time, he was defeated by another Spider-Man clone, the Scarlet Spider, who destroyed the gauntlets, preventing him from taking any more. In the time he had remaining, he wanted to take revenge on the Prowler for foiling his takeover of Bestman Electronics, but succeeded only in finding an imposter Prowler, Rick Lawson, and not the original Hobby Brown. In the midst of this, during another encounter with Spider-Man, Toombs crashed into the molten remains of a decay-inducing villain named David Callan, or DK. This destroyed what was left of the Juvenator and again left the Vulture appearing old and frail. Now, there are plenty more stories featuring Adrian Toomes, but we're just about out of time for this episode and his status quo hasn't shifted significantly since then. But before we end off for the week, let's talk a little about others who have used the name. 
We already mentioned both Blackie Drago and Clifton Shallot, who tried to use the Vulture's technology and usurp his name, neither of which were successful in any long-term sense. While Shallot hasn't been heard of again, Blackie Drago was last seen still in prison serving out his sentence. There's also a newer one, a mobster named Jimmy Natale, who was transformed into a more monstrous vulture by the Magia, using the same technology that gave the scorpion and the human fly their powers. He has no real connection to Adrian Toomes aside from the name, and in addition to flight, Natale can spit an acid vomit to blind and terrorize his victims. He's notable for being more savage than the original Vulture, acting as a vigilante but murdering criminals and feeding on their bodies. There were also at least two Vultures who clashed with heroes like Captain America in the 1940s, one of which initially appeared to be a very uncomfortable depiction of a Native American. And okay, look, while these old comics aren't necessarily unproblematic, in this particular instance, the Vulture turned out to be a white American named Hugh Bradley, who was posing as a native man and worked against the country on behalf of the Japanese. Then in the 1950s, there was an Italian atomic physicist named Isidoro Scarlatti, who led a double life as the masked international crime lord, the Vulture. He clashed with the original Human Torch and his partner Toro several times before being defeated and taken into custody. Going back even further, there was a man named Mikhail Oglu who called himself the Vulture thousands of years ago during the Hyborian Age. He was beheaded by the Sumerian barbarian known as Conan. Finally, one last character I want to touch on briefly is Tiana Toombs, the Vulture's granddaughter who we mentioned earlier. Tiana's father passed away when she was very young, but Adrian supported the family anonymously. Five years later, he wanted to be a part of his granddaughter's life and took her out flying. Seven years after that, when Tiana's mother also died, Adrian was there to support her at the service. And shortly afterwards, he gave his granddaughter a flying suit of her own. Naming herself Starling, Tiana became a vigilante and somewhat ironically ended up allying herself with the younger Spider-Man, Miles Morales. And that's all I've got for you this week. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, share the video, and subscribe for more Marvelous content. As always, the issues referenced in this video are listed in the description below if you would like to read them for yourself, as well as links to other places you can find me, including my Patreon page, where for only a dollar a month you can get your name in these special thanks here. So until next time, true believers, Excelsior!